Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to QPC Espanola, the online church. Welcome to our homecoming Sunday. Today is the day where uh, specifically in our Espanola campus, but also for our Little Curtain campus, our online campuses, uh, we're excited to launch into the fall season. It's homecoming Sunday. I'm going to share a bit about that in just a second. So just excited to be together today. I uh, just want to remind everyone, you've heard it already, but there's a call to prayer. We're having two weeks of prayer starting tomorrow, actually right here at our Espinola campus at seven o'clock in the morning, 7 a.m. every day. And uh, we're just looking forward to gathering together for prayer over the next two weeks. So please be a part of that. And uh, we'll have some updates regarding our prayer times as the days go on. Uh, looking forward to today, as I said, this is Homecoming Sunday, and I'm just so excited to share with our Queensway family. We got some uh, kind of family business to deal with, but also some exciting things to look upon into the future. I'm going to announce at the end of our uh, message today. So let's jump right in. I've had so much on my mind uh, today. Uh, and in these days that we're living in, it's homecoming Sunday today in Espanola, and we'll celebrate next week in Little Kern as well. Homecoming is actually not a phrase I would uh, normally use. Homecoming has some other thoughts for me, but I, I thought about homecoming this year was something that I really felt compelled to call our, our uh, kind of our fall kickoff season. Call it homecoming. I felt led to use this word to describe something that, you know, I I've been feeling and I've been sensing in my spirit in the last uh, couple months really that I want to share with our congregation today. I've heard from leaders across our region as I've been uh, processing some of the things that I've been seeing in our own campuses the past couple months uh, over the summertime in particular and now into the fall. Today I think that wherever we're gathering, whether we're in at our Espanola campus, whether we're at our Little Current campus or we're a part of our online campus, I have a message that I want all of us to receive loud and clearly today. I've got something that it's been on my heart and you know I just really want to share with you today. It's time, this is the kind of the statement that I want you to remember as best you can today. Write it down, tattoo it on your arm. I don't know, just joking, but whatever you got to do, let's remember this statement. It's time to come home. It's time to come home. Before the next thing comes along to distract us, to shift our focus, uh, to take precedent in our lives, I want to encourage us, it's time to come home before anything else happens. It is time to come home. Before hunting season, before the business of our personal schedules, our personal ambitions increase and begin to take over our lives, I want to remind us that it is it is time to come home. Luke 2 verse 49 is our uh, scripture text for today. It'll be familiar to many of you. Uh, as always, it's a simple message that connects with a few points of discussion really for our Queensway family today. And I want to share the scripture passage, which we're, we're going to start Luke 2. We're going to start in verse 41. The words will be on the screen. Read along with me today. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. Feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. Verse 45. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Verse 48. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. Now, church, I want you to really focus in on this next passage because this is our scripture text for today. Let's take a look. And he said to them, 
Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business in my father's house? Did you, did you not know that I must be about my father's business in my father's house? This church is for us today. This message is for us today. Here's my question for you, uh, a part of our Queensway family. What business are you about? What business are you in these days? Are you about your father's business? Are you in your father's house? That's what I want to implore today. I've noticed a few new uh, businesses that some of us get caught up in from time to time these days. Here's a few. Uh, for example, we'll just rattle them off. Here's a few. The uh, First to kick us off, lack of commitment, alternative priorities, uh, uh, feeding selfish ambitions instead of keeping the main thing the main thing. Trusting in skeptics instead of trusting in the word of God, the word of truth. Chasing desires instead of pursuing holiness. Gratifying ourselves instead of disciplining our mind, our body and spirit into who the Lord Jesus tells us that we are. And that's what I've noticed. I love in our passage today that Jesus was 12 years old and it hits home for me when I read that and learn about that because my oldest son Leland turns 12 in the next month. So it really resonates with me that Jesus was his age at this moment. When Jesus' parents ask him where he's been, his response is a faith declaration for every one of us today. These words of Jesus, they're so unique because he's a child. He's 12 years old. His parents are looking for him. He's been lost and they just found him. Has so many implications for us. But the truth is, Jesus' response is a declaration declaration that you and I need to take today. Where am I? Where would, where else would I be? I must be in my father's house. I must be about my father's business. Jesus's response to his earthly parents is that there was no need to search for him. If they actually thought about it, they would know exactly where he would be. He must be about his father's business, of course. Where do we find Jesus? He must be in his father's house. Or, of course, I've mentioned it already, but some translations say uh, that he his, he must be about, he must be in his father's business. Psalm 40 verse 8 today is a great passage for us to remember. Remember in the context of Luke chapter 2, in verse, uh, Psalm 40 verse 8 says, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. That delight, we must delight. We know that we can delight in doing the will of God. The disciples remind us in John 2 verse 17, uh, it says this, His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. This is what the disciples learned and taught was that the zeal for God's house, the Lord's house, would consume us, not in a negative way, of course, but in a way of passion and commitment and desire for the things of God. This should be no different for us right now, for us right today. Some people have responded to me over the years when I kind of uh, talk about the zeal that maybe we have for God's house. Some people uh, over the years, whether young or old or male or female, every tribe, every nation, I get responses like this. Well, pastor, just ask. And so I would ask, I'd say, okay, what about the father's house? And I, I get responses like, well, I'm here if you need me, or I love to help at church, or uh, I used I used to help out in the kids ministry, or I used to help out in the accounting ministry. You're right. Just ask, but the scripture tells me if someone is looking for me, where would I be found? If you said, where is Pastor Jay today? Where, where is he? Where is he in these days? I hope that you would come to my father's house. And of course, we know that's much more than a building, but it's a place where God's people are together that I would come into the father's house, that you would find me in the father's house. I must be found in my father's house around and doing my father's business is what the scripture reminds me and you today. Well, pastor, 
That's a little bit blunt and a little bit specific. Are you talking about me? No, I'm not, I'm not talking about anyone in particular. But here's some more blunt and specific realities that you and I are facing in these days that I want us to be perfectly clear and understand about. Here's one thing, I, I kinda, I'm not a math person, but I figured out some math this week, so bear with me. We've lost 37 weeks, so that means we've lost 37 Sundays and 37 weeks of ministry in the past 18 plus months, just connected to lockdown. So we've been locked down, we've been told to stay at home, stay safe. We've lost 37 weeks, 37 Sundays in the past 18 plus months. That's almost exactly, if you do the math like I did, it's almost exactly 50% of our time for face-to-face -face ministry, in-person gatherings, not just Sundays, but throughout the week through, with uh, different times of the year, different seasons, doing different things. We've lost 50% of our face-to-face -face ministry time in the last 18 plus months. Church, it's gone. We can't get it back. It's gone. The time, <laughs> time's a waste and it's, it's gone. We, we, we can't go back and get it, reclaim it or anything like that. So when we hear for whatever reason, when I hear for whatever reason, whether the reason is a valid reason or an invalid reason that people don't have time for church, pastor, I don't got time to come to church this week, pastor, I don't got time to do that thing in God's house house this week, Pastor, I don't got time to do this or that or the other thing. Even just coming to be with God's people. Sometimes people will give me excuses to just not be here, just to not be a part of God's people on a Sunday morning, for example. You know what, church? Over time, not when one person says it to me, it doesn't scare me, but over time when it's repeatedly uh, spoken to me and spoken over me and all these things, I grow concerned. I hope you would understand why as a pastor I would grow concerned. I've been so grateful to our church and board, uh, our church board the last few months in particular. Man, have they stepped up, each one of our board members. We can be so grateful to, their, to them and the work that they've been doing. They've stepped up. Even in the past week, we've been connecting with some of our QPC family to take on a role on Sunday mornings. We have roles that need to be filled at our campuses on Sunday morning, whether you're uh, with us in Espanola or Little Current or online church. We have roles for people that need to be accomplished on Sunday mornings. And so many people that we've already spoken to have said, yes, they want to serve. They want to be a part of what God is doing. There's lots to be positive about. There's lots to be grateful for. However, I still, even in the midst of this, I still get messages of some of us pulling back. Not, I can't do it right now. Give me a few weeks. Give me a couple months. Give me, let me get some things in order in my life and then I'll be available. Again, our reasons are often valid. Of course they're valid, but I'm here to remind us of the main thing today. It starts with simply this, I must be about my father's business. I must be in my father's house. I must. That's what our heart's desire should be. What am I about these days? We are for and against all kinds of things in our society. What am I about these days? Where do my priorities fall in these days? The Lord Jesus reminds us in John uh, chapter 4, verse 34, he says, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Let me say it again, so good. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Church, today I think of our kids' ministry and our youth ministries. Obviously, they are often our greatest source of need. We need uh, people to commit to be a part of those ministries so that they can function safely and correctly. You see, we can be in intimidated. And I've heard adults, especially in our own congregation, talk about this. We can be intimidated by the kids sometimes. And I think, man, like... Really? But we can be intimidated by these little, like just little, little children. And sometimes they will actually like stare at us in the face and they'll begin, I'm not going to do it, but they'll begin to like kind of growl at us. Now I find if you get past the growling, good things happen. Often they smile or they laugh. 
or they run away because they realize they didn't scare you. But the truth is, is that yes, kids can be a challenge sometimes, but we need to be with them. They've lost half of their discipleship time in the last 18 months as we teach them about the Lord Jesus and what he does in our lives. Yeah, I think of our, our students, our junior highs and senior highs. Some of them are large. They actually make me feel small. Some of them, I don't know what happened. Some of them kind of live my, in my house right now, but some of them just like sprouted this summer and they, they just make me feel small and they can be intimidating. I'm not a small person. And when I stand beside someone and I'm intimidated by them, I'm thinking, man, come on. I'm not actually that small myself, but let me remind us today, the needs of our students is great. The needs of our students is great. Many of them are really the least of these in our society. We have a great responsibility, as scripture tells us, to care for their needs, to teach them, instruct them, and lead, and lead them in the things of God. Each of these groups has had limited ministry directed to them because of lockdowns. Yes, we've had points of contact with our student ministries and our children's ministry every week, multiple times throughout the week, uh, over the course of the last eight 18 months. No one has been left alone. But the truth is, it's not been the same. It's not been face to face. It's not been a deep personal connection. Remember when you started high school to when you finished high school, I don't know how many of us finished. I finished high school, but remember when you started it and remember when you finished high school, didn't you feel like so much time had passed? I I went to high school for four years. Some people I knew went to high school for five years. Some people went to high school for like eight years or, you know, we won't go down that road. But the truth is, uh, remember how much time we felt that uh, had passed while we were in high school, even if it was just for three, four, five years kind of thing. Uh, Didn't you feel like so much time had elapsed that you were so much older? Well, that we learn as we grow older, and I'm learning this as I grow older, that that was just four years. That happened. That was just four years. Four years. I think of my own children. My kids, they think that I'm old. If I ask them or if you ask them, if you say, hey, do you think your dad looks old or, you know, he's getting older, he's aging, they'll be like, yeah, that guy's old, man. And the truth is, is that even some of our students would, of course, say that of me as well. But when I think of how my kids think I'm old, I have pictures that appear on my phone each day of them when they were babies. They don't want to hear this, but I have these pictures. They just pop up for me of them when they were babies babies and some of them are, uh, especially lately, some of them have been about them as young children on their first days of school for different grades. And I remember all that stuff like it was yesterday. When I see a photo of one of my kids as a baby or their first day in kindergarten, the first day in grade one, man, I remember it. I'm like, man, <laughs> excuse me, I think, didn't that just happen? Didn't, weren't we just there? Time flies for our kids and for our students. You know that, I know that. If you have children, you've seen how fast they've grown. If you've got grandkids, you're like, man, my kids are old and smelly now. My grandkids are starting to get old and smelly. You see that time flies by. Time flies for our kids and our students. And we can't afford to allow ministry opportunities to pass us by. We don't live, not that we could ever, but we don't live in those days. We don't live in times where we can allow opportunities to pass us by. Pastor Mark and our youth leaders can be over overwhelmed with some of life's most difficult questions. Just the past uh, couple of weeks, I've been around the youth ministry a bit, and with our, uh, I've, I've watched with our students, with our youth, we've had significant issues come up that need Christ-like counsel, Christ-like wisdom, and prayer to our Lord Jesus that he would provide every uh, necessity we need, all the wisdom, all the counsel we need to instruct the lives of these students. For our youth ministry, let me give you a very specific and practical need today. At our campuses, we've given actually uh, we've actually given out the, this paperwork. If you've been in person in Espanola or Little Current today, for our youth ministry, we need at least two to three uh, more adult volunteers to run our program. We, that's a need we have. We need that today. We don't need that next week. We need it today. We can't if, so, if two to three people come to us in six months, it doesn't really do much good for us. We need two to three more adult volunteers today. And in fact. Uh, it's actually a greater need than just two or three adult volunteers. We need five to 10 more adult 
youth volunteers to share the burden so that it's not just up to one, two, three, four, five, six plus people to bear. No, we need multiples of people to bear these burdens to, or not burdens, I don't want to say that's the wrong word, just to bear these burdens responsibilities. This is a God-given responsibility. This is a God-given opportunity that we have to serve the students in our community. I think of our kids ministry. I've already mentioned it, like the youth and our students. And in our kids ministry, volunteers have stepped up for kids ministry today at our Espanola campus and more in the coming weeks. However, we need more people to step up for our kids' ministry so that we can have kids' ministry at our Espinola campus and we can have kids' ministry at a Little Current campus. Yes, we have enough volunteer kids' leaders today. So if you brought your kids to our Espinola campus today, we have enough adult volunteers for today. But we should never allow one group of leaders to handle the kids' ministry every week from now until when Jesus comes back. No, 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 that is, we're not doing that. That's wrong, okay? We need more. We should have enough uh, volunteers and kids ministry leaders for a full team to only have to serve every three to four weeks. That's our goal is that just once a month we would have to uh, uh, have teams serving in our, in our kids ministry, for example. And of course, the same would be, could be said about our worship teams and all the other teams we have. Let me tell you a little personal story. Some of you have heard it before, some of you haven't, but just felt led by the Holy Spirit to share this today. Because I was thinking about it. I was actually uh, in a coffee shop in Sudbury this last week, and I was thinking about this. Four years ago, this month, even these, this week probably, I knew that God had a new ministry mandate for me. <laughs> Sometimes as pastors... People wonder how it all works and all these little things behind the scenes. Well, sometimes you just know that God is moving you into a new season. And I went out for coffee with a pastor who, if I said their name, they, the name would actually be familiar to many people, a part of our Queensway family today. Anyways, he listened to me uh, talk and what I was actually doing, I was basically complaining to him about the situations I was in at that moment and the issues I was having. So the truth is I wasn't uh, doing anything too interesting. After listening to my diatribe and my complaining, he said to me, he looked me in the face and just said, said it very gently and sincerely to me. He said, I think you should be a lead pastor. He said that to me. That's who he said it to. And I remember thinking, this guy is on something. He is crazy. Why would I do something like that? This guy's nuts. So I always, uh, people know this about me, that if, especially people who know me for many, many years, I always and have always wanted to serve in the church. I love the local church. It's, it gets me up every morning. It motivates me. The local church uh, uh, puts passion in my bones. And I love the local church with all my heart. Jesus tells us to love his church. And that's something that's been within me for most of my life. But when I think of, when I, in, uh, four years ago, when I thought about serving the local church, I never thought about being a lead pastor. That was not one of the things in the cards that I ever considered. I wasn't even interested in it, to be honest with you. I was like, man, when this pastor suggests, I'm like, dude, what is wrong? Okay. And so I left that meeting thinking this guy was nuts. That's how I left this meeting. And I remember thinking about it on my drive home, the things that he encouraged me about and the things that he had shared with me. And I remember I talked with Arlene about what this pastor and leader had said. And, and as I shared these details and as I thought more about it, the Holy Spirit began to work on me to change my heart. I realized that I was blocking something that God wanted to do in my life. And I needed to open my heart to what the Lord Jesus wanted to do in me. And I knew that like you, God has, I knew in that moment, I know today that God has a call on my life. And like the first recorded words of our Lord Jesus, as we read today, the call on my life is simple. And I believe this call is on your life and every life that's viewing uh, our, our, our church gathering, our Sunday gathering today. God's call on my life is I must be in my father's house. 
I must be in my father's house. I must be about my father's business. I must be about my father's business. John 8 verse 29 says, And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. Now church, I want to just share something. I've shared a lot from my heart today already, but I have something else I want to share with our Queensway family today. Over the past 18 plus months, I've made a few choices as lead pastor that has contributed to today's message. I have to bear my share of responsibility. I've carried too much weight on my own shoulders. I've done too much. I've taken care of too many uh, details within our congregation. Maybe it's because of my own expectations. Maybe it's my own ego. I don't know. I haven't nailed it completely down. I'm sure it's all those things I just mentioned. But what I want to change is that our church's success isn't connected to my personal abilities. I know that may sound weird, kind of sounds weird to me from a certain perspective, but I don't want our church's success uh, connected directly to my personal abilities. I want our church's success to be directly connected to the gifts and leading of the Holy Spirit through the people of God at Queensway. That's who I want that to come from. I want our church's success and progression, our drive, focus to be based on what God is doing through each of us. It's our turn collectively. It's not Pastor Jay's turn or Pastor Jay's job or Pastor Jay's this or that. No, no. It's our turn. And I want every one of us to say this today. I must. Can you say that with me? I must, I must be in my father's house. I must be about my father's business. Revelation 21 verse 5 reminds us that at the completion of time, he will do a new thing. The Lord Jesus, God, our father in heaven, he will do a new thing. As we read through scripture, we are reminded that God loves to do new things. If you uh, haven't figured that out in your faith journey yet, I want to remind you today that God loves to do new things. Revelation, as I said, 21.5 says, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. At the completion of time, God will make all things new. And we see throughout scripture that he continually does new things in our lives. Today, I want to unveil something new coming to our church. And this is a big one for our Queensway family today. The last year, our church has been growing in uh, a number of different ways. Case in point, we were presented with an opportunity to officially welcome our little current family into our QPC family over the past year. Our board and church leadership has been 100% uh, engage and on board with these decisions, supportive. In fact, when we went through all the details of how to welcome the little current family into our Queensway family, our whole Queensway family, every single one of us has actually been 100% on board. When we took votes, it was 100%. When we talked about it, we had great feedback. Because of necessity, we've uh, transitioned some of our ministry onto our online church platform. There's people across our region uh, gathering at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. today uh, on our online church platform and uh, are worshiping with us and hearing this message and joining in spirit and with us today. And when we went into lockdowns uh, this past winter and last spring, our church leadership said, no problem. We were full of faith. We said, no problem. We can do this. And we did. We got through those days. And a part of this growth and advancement to the ministry at QPC, our leadership in, in these days and in, in the changes that have occurred, whether by our choice or necessity, 
Our leadership has recognized a need for a change in our church name. We felt led by the Holy Spirit in these days that we need to reflect something that's that's not just new but transitional that that builds uh, great uh, desire great uh, faith in us in these days to reflect what God is doing in our church family for many years now we've been known as Queensway Pentecostal Church. For many years, we've been known as Queensway Pentecostal Church. However, this name hasn't always been exactly the same. It's had different uh, versions of it over the years, I guess you could say. I was cleaning and organizing my office the past few weeks because of renos, and I came across an object in my office, and it was labeled Queensway Pentecostal Temple. Queensway Pentecostal Temple. So something that is not that old was named like that. A number of years ago, I came across uh, a sign that says Espinola Pentecostal Temple. Espinola Pentecostal Temple. You can change a name, but the same spiritual foundation and DNA will still flow through the veins of God's people. As leadership, we've prayed and discussed some different options and ideas when we've thought of, well, if we change our name, what could that look like? And over the summer, this has been going on for months and months and months, but over the summer, we decided that we want to officially change our church name to Northern Life Church. We want to change our name to Northern Life Church. I actually feel like we are giving this name life just by talking about it today. Northern Life Church, man, so good. We believe uh, this is a great name for our family, our church family moving forward. It embraces the North, in case you didn't know we are in the North. It reminds us that life is only found in Jesus and that we are his church. We are his bride, a part of his kingdom across our region. Northern Life Church has campuses in Espanola, in Little Current, and online. Northern Life Church has campuses in Espanola, in Little Current, and online. We are one church with three locations. So today I'm giving advance notice that we will have a business meeting for all our QPC members on Tuesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. In this meeting, we will answer any submitted questions and vote on officially changing the name of our church to Northern Life Church. That's what we're going to do on Tuesday, October 5th, 7 o'clock. We're going to officially change the name of our, a vote to change the name of our church to Northern Life Church. We will also make a change to our uh, local church constitution that allows us to officially have in-person and online business meetings moving forward. We want to take care of that before any more time passes. It's a simple addition to our local church constitution. Also, we'd like to take a vote on how to invest the funds that have been earned from the sale of our old church parsonage. The deal uh, for that house officially closed this past spring. And we want to have an official vote on how to invest those funds for the short term. You see, church, God is doing a new thing. Northern Life Church. God is doing a new thing at Northern Life Church in Espanola and Little Current and online. We need everyone in our church family to be involved. We need everyone. I must, I must be about my father's business. I must be in my father's house is the words that we've read in scripture today. Many people have subtly or not so subtly referred to us living in the last days. We, a lot of us believe that we are living in the last days of this earth before we go to be with our Lord Jesus. This means that many in our church family believe that Jesus is coming back very soon. Not in a little while, not soon, but no, very soon. And the truth is, I agree with that. I agree that Jesus is coming back soon, of course. 
And Jesus tells us this about our time, how we use our time. John chapter 9 verses 4 to 5 says, We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Church, as long as Jesus is with us, his light will guide us. I want to leave us today with this takeaway. I want to leave us with a few faith statements in our takeaway today that we can responsively declare. I uh, want you to speak these declarations with me, whether you're at home or joining us at our Little Current campus today. I want you to speak these declarations out loud. Just if you need to shout it, shout it out loud, whatever you got to do. But I want you to speak these declarations along with me today. Here's our first one. The declarations will be on the screen. I must keep my commitment. I must keep my commitment. This commitment, of course, is to many things. Our church, our families, our spouses, our kids, our loved ones, and the list goes on and on. I must keep my commitment. I must pursue God's presence daily. I must pursue God's presence daily. Church, we're starting two weeks of prayer tomorrow, seven o'clock at our Espanola campus. We need you to be a part of our two weeks of prayer. Every day, seven o'clock, we pray for one hour. We must, I must pursue God's presence daily. That has to be a part of our life. The third and final one here, I must tell someone about Jesus. I must tell someone about Jesus. Church, we have a unique opportunity across our region for the next month. For the first time in 25 plus years, I don't even know, this is the number I've heard, a long time. For the first time in decades, our region is doing something where churches are coming together to host an event. It's going to be in person. It's going to be online for people to hear the gospel message, the life-changing gospel message. And I want us to consider who we can tell, who we can invite, who we can encourage to hear about Jesus for the first time. Maybe it's a family member we've been praying for for a long time. Maybe it's a friend that we've just never really had the opportunity to share our faith with. Whoever it is in your life, now is the time. I must be about my father's business. We love you, QBC family. God has great things in store for us in the days to come. Wow, I'm so excited. Northern Life Church, we're going to be voting on it in just a couple weeks. Can't wait. God bless everyone. Have a great day. Little Current, I'm going to be with you next week. Online, so glad you're with us today. It's homecoming Sunday. I must be be about my father's business. I must be in my father's house. God bless everyone. See you next time. Father's in the room Miracles take place